What's going on there guys? Good evening. It's the Earth Master here with an update video on this Wednesday, July 20th, 2022 date, about 9.31 p.m. West Coast time here. Latest quake shows a 2.2 earthquake out around the Mediterranean region, that right there in that uh, green flag area. Let's go ahead and check out some activity happening out here around the globe or the flat scale mo model, whichever one you prefer. Some activity bun uh, kind of bunching up here against the uh, southwestern portion of the Philippine plate. That's going to be this area right here south of the Philippines. Getting in on some activity, quite a few fours, including a 5.0, somewhat deep at 124 kilometers here into the Philippine Trench. And some movement a little bit further up north here off the coast of Japan. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the west coast here while we're kind of around this area. Uh, looking somewhat, uh, somewhat average, I guess, for activity. Uh, a little bit of movement in the Northern California area outside of the Clear Lake region. Got a uh, 2.5 in the Hidden Valley Lake area. This sits just outside of the Calpine uh, hydrothermal operations here. A lot of um, power plants within that region with that 2.5 striking here just to the east. Looks like it's almost close to the, uh, what is this fault system right here? I know it's Hunting Creek Berryessa fault zone. Don't see too much activity out there, but uh, kind of just sitting out there to the west of that specific fault area. Uh, a little bit further south as we look at Southern California. Uh, not a whole lot going on throughout the uh, Long Valley Supervolcano or the central southern part here of the San Joaquin Valley. Things kind of uh, at a minimal for earthquake activity. Yes, there's a little bit of movement here outside of the Soledad area, right smack dab on the San Andreas Fault. But most of that is some microquake activity there along the creeping section. That, that's pretty typical of seeing that movement there uh, on any given day. Uh, outside of the Ridgecrest area, a little spotty activity. North of there, very close to the Owens Valley Fault Zone. Nothing really going on across the uh, Garlock Fault. It looks pretty quiet there tonight. Southern Cal, much further south. Looks a little on the barren side. There's not a whole lot of activity. Got one earthquake within the last hour. Uh, it's a point eight, but other than that, the majority of this earthquake activity is from much, much earlier uh, in the afternoon time frame. So not a whole lot going on, folks. As uh, far as technically speaking out here along the west coast, one earthquake in Nevada. We got a 2.1 near Kingston. This is just outside the swarming area of the Eureka region. Eureka sits way up here. But this swarming activity has been ongoing for quite a while. Got a little activity taking place there outside of that region. Uh, the Mount St. Helens area, this movement from yeah, uh, actually older this morning, older activity this morning. No renewed movement there at Mount St. Helens. Uh, as we look at the Intermountain West regions and Idaho, look at that. Things are very barren out here. Um, not a whole lot going on through the Sawtooth Fault System or the Yellowstone area. And that's a little on the odd side. Uh, looks like uh, Oklahoma and Texas. Even one earthquake out here around the New Madrid zone. Uh, looks like a pretty small 2.3. In the Missouri area, this is the area around the New Madrid zone. Seismically uh, hazardous area. It's kind of right there, right smack dab in the red zone there. So uh, occasionally we do some see some earthquake activity out there, and that's kind of what we're seeing today. Around the Puerto Rico area, we had a 3.4 kick up here earlier this afternoon, but the latest earthquake shows a 2.6 into the swarming area of Puerto Rico. The rest of the Caribbean plate, look at that. Pretty pretty quiet, folks. Um, off into the uh, Cocos Ridge here. Of course, you got the Cocos Plate. That's going to be this little plate boundary here surrounded by this red line and the Nazca Plate. Uh, we do have a 4.5 kicking up there south of Panama, off the coast, well off the coast. Uh, but other than that, man, things are just kind of... I don't know what's going on, but notice here in the Atlantic Ocean, South Atlantic Ocean, we're getting some further activity kicking up here along the rift areas. Got a 4.9 in the southern mid-Atlantic ridge. So this area 
Uh, looks as though we're seeing a little bit. Let me show you guys the uh, the rift areas. This is kind of a separating seafloor. Uh, most of the time, when we do see separation out here, we get some further activity into the South America region and also over here to the east, uh, up along the uh, Australian Plate region and areas along the uh, Java Trench and whatnot. This is kind of the uh, GPS coordinates when it comes to the plate movement, general plate movement out there. Of course, independently, each fault system has its own movement, but this as a whole, as a whole, uh, tends to show the correct movement here. And uh, so we'll watch for some possible further activity out here along this area of the world, uh, but also at the same time around the Atlantic Ocean, we could see uh, some further movement. It's been a while, actually quite a while, since we've seen any activity uh, stretching up into the uh, Mid-Atlantic region, so we'll watch that pretty closely. Uh, Hawaii got some activity kicking up here, but again, this is some older movement. Uh, not a whole lot of renewed activity going on here in the, along the big island of Hawaii. Uh, watch that uh, area as well. Alaska. Alaska is Alaska. Very typical movement up here right now. No major swarms going on. Uh, the only noticeable movement that I can see across the globe right now, uh, across the flat scale map, is this little cluster of quakes here along the southern portion of the Philippines plate and into the Indonesia Islands area. So that could be pointing to, towards some further activity here along the Java Trench. It normally works that way in terms of the westward pressure movement here with uh, the dynamics here of the plate tectonics. Uh, so watch this area roughly about China down south here through the uh, Java Trench region. Into the Tonga area, uh, this activity here, not, uh, not new, much older. Looking at a couple upper fours from earlier this morning time frame. Let's bring up the EMSC model here just real quick and see if we can confirm all the quakes that we're seeing here on the USGS model. And uh, yeah, looks looks about the same. No new earthquake activity to speak of. There's the Atlantic Ocean uh, out here. The uh, earthquake way down south, right? Let me double check that here. Make sure we're looking at the same models yep way down south it's going to be this one right here that we are just looking at um other than that wow it's just it's kind of a dead night folks i mean it, sometimes we get these periods of a uh, very quiet plate movement i mean things just you know just kind of priming up i guess to uh maybe do some further shuffling around Right now, there's not a whole lot going on. Guys, ignore this. This is not magma movement. It's not any type of large-scale volcanic eruption that was taking place. We would see that all across the maps. Technical inter interference there with the digital portion of the uh, seismographs. As far as localized seismic activity, there's not a whole lot going on here, folks, at all. Um, as far as earthquake activity goes, uh, just very spotty microquakes. No unusual movement to note here along the eastern section of the park. All is clear, green, and beautiful up there at Yellowstone National Park Super Volcano. Uh, let's see, Earthquakes Canada here. A lot of folks asking, how come we don't cover the Earthquakes Canada region? Well, we do. Uh, every night? Nah, not necessarily. But we do pop them up here on occasion, and we look at earthquake activity occurring along the Pacific and the North American plate boundary here off the coast of Canada. The uh, latest quake shows a 1.6 uh, south of the vil village of Queen Charlotte, BC area. So this region here does not have a whole lot of uh, dynamic stress when it comes to uh, the slip rate. So we don't see, tech it's very unusual to see a lot of large scale movement up here along this area of the North American Pacific plate boundary. Uh, once you get down here to the uh, subduction zone of the Cascadia and southward in the Northern California, things start getting uh, a little tense. But as far as any movement goes, I mean, there's normally not a whole lot to cover uh, when it comes to the Canada region here off the BC coast. There really isn't, um, but we cover it. We try to cover it uh, whenever there's activity, but to, to show, you know, an, a map that shows nothing on it, it's just kind of, a little on the pointless side, but um, you know we'll, we'll try to squeeze it in there for sure. 
little activity here over the last few days or weeks or so uh, within this area of the Cascadia subduction zone. This here is the, basically the boundary, the split boundary here between the Explorer Plate, which is roughly extends right up here to about here. And then south of here comes the Juan de Fuca Plate. So there's a little fracture zone here that we're seeing earthquake activity occur on uh, within those plate boundaries. But overall, seismic activity across the uh, beautiful country of, of uh, Canada looks a little quiet right now. Some older movement, of course, uh, up north, but as far as recent activity goes, things are uh, a little on the quiet side here, folks. Looking at the latest fire map here, uh, not any new movement or new movement, uh, new fires here in Northern California, fortunately. Uh, there is some activity down south, north of Los Angeles, outside of Temecula. A couple fires popping up, uh, popping up out there. Uh, no major big ones. I know the Yosemite area did have a couple larger uh, fires. We've got 421 acres up here outside of the Mariposa area. Uh, the bigger one I would think uh, to announce is the 4,856-acre fire up near Yosemite. It is kind of starting to burn south a little bit. It is 58% contained, which is good news. Uh, but there still is a lot of uncharted territory out there uh, when it comes to trying to get a containment around that fire line. But uh, yeah, there's some beautiful areas down there too. I hate seeing that stuff destroyed. Uh, let's see what we got for solar weather activity. I know we got a G1 class storm coming up here over the next couple nights. Red, check it out. It's been a while since we've seen red across the board. Now, this is not due to solar flare activity, but from a ginormous coronal hole. Now, notice the update here. Uh, this kind of jumped here a day or so. Earlier this morning, we had an update, and the coronal holes were still kind of facing Earth here. Well, this is the latest update. Sometimes the solar ham site is a little slow, but uh, it was updated earlier today. Uh, it's got July 21st time frame, meaning the UTC date. Uh, and those coronal holes have now kind of passed over this way, a little bit further out of the Earth view, but they have poured quite a bit of solar wind stream at us. And that is the reason for the three day geomagnetic forecast in the heightened area. Uh, not expecting anything uh, catastrophic we get these coronal holes quite often 70% uh, chance at the higher latitudes there for those lucky folks that get to see the uh, beautiful lights in the sky here in California I get to see bugs that's about it bugs here we're lucky if we have them uh, so this will be kicking up here looks like uh, July 21st UTC time around 06 or 0 to 6 uh, 100 UTC time. Right now, we're currently at the 0445 time stamp. So things should be amping up pretty nicely here with the KP index very soon. And we should see the Aurora forecast amplify for the folks at the higher latitudes, possibly the uh, upper tier states. We'll see how that uh, kicks up. But uh, yeah. Looking uh, pretty awesome for the folks up there that want to see some beautiful lights in the sky. I, I definitely envy you, envy you guys uh, here in California. We just don't get them. Uh, I'm excited just to see a cloud in the sky. <laughs> Not even joking. Um, latest activity on the solar flux x-ray data shows... Uh, I've seen an, uh, kind of a moderate sea flare. There we go. A little moderate sea flare kicking up. A long duration sea flare over the past few hours has since kind of died down. I believe it's from one of these far sun side, uh, <laughs> far sun side, okay, far side sunspots over here. Uh, not directed towards Earth, or some, some, obviously some of these sunspots facing Earth, but I believe that sea flare was uh, over here along the eastern region, or western regions of the sun. Looking at solar flare potential, not a whole lot going on. We've got a 90% chance of sea flare, obviously. But as far as any dynamic setup here from the sun spots, they're all just fading away. I mean, it sucks, but they're all fading away and dying out. Uh, and and it's, it's looking pretty boring, folks. I hate using the boring word for sun spots. But uh, that is that is what it is right now. And it's not looking active in terms of any major flares going on. Current data here from the solar weather chart 
doesn't looks like a little uplift here in density uh, but speed down there way way down there so when the CME does kick up or the uh, coronal hole activity solar wind stream the G1 class storm when that arrives the solar wind that is we'll see elevated speed obviously kick up in a dramatic way and density should kick up as well and, uh, and then we should see some lights in the sky for the folks at the uh, the lucky higher latitude areas all right, guys, um, have a good night. Uh, again, you know, earthquake activity kind of at a pause as far as large scale movement goes. You know, when it comes to watching certain areas, the Middle America Trench here uh, off the coast of Mexico, Guatemala, Nicaragua, uh, Costa Rica area, all showing some heightened activity here in the three and four range. So, uh, got to watch this area pretty closely. We haven't seen any further large scale movement to the west. Here. I'm talking uh, with the Pacific Plate, Philippine Plate, and areas uh, Indian region. So I think we need to watch this area around the Middle America Trench still pretty closely. South America is seeing some swarming in the two and three range. So these are a couple hot spots to watch pretty closely uh, for some possible movement. Unless, unless we see some larger scale activity here to the west. Uh, this is kind of the target area right now for some possible possible movement. 2.0 showing up. What's the latest quake? Way up in Alaska, 1.0. Yeah, kind of dull at the moment, but we'll keep an eye on it. And of course, they're running 24-7 here on the live stream, folks. Uh, again, another uh, shout out to our lucky winner on the members section here. Uh, Robert Kozowski won a $50 Visa gift card. I uh, thought he wanted an Amazon gift card, but he kind of chose a, uh, a Visa gift card. So we're going to send that out to him ASAP. And uh, that's one of the perks and the benefits of being a member here on the channel. Winning a monthly drawings here. So everyone that's a member of the channel gets thrown into a fishbowl. Of course, the fishbowl is kind of small right now. So your chances of winning something are actually pretty heightened in terms of the monthly drawings. So make sure you guys... Uh, Join the channel here if you wish to see some background stuff and some um, other videos aside from from uh, earthquake updates and whatnot. So, still kind of a work in progress. I want to add on quite a few extra icons. I only I'm only limited right now on some icons and some emojis, but I hope to uh, real soon implement some uh, a much broader scale of emojis and icons here for the members. And uh, that's in the works, folks. It, it's kind of hard to be a one-man band of course missy memes here does help me out a lot uh, but definitely hard with all the school work and stuff we're doing right now for summer classes tomorrow is the last day of our summer class and uh I, man i have a huge a huge uh report i have to do on the city of pompeii right uh, a lot of folks know about that ancient city folks got buried by a major volcanic eruption there a long time ago one of my favorite topics when it comes to anthropology and whatnot. Uh, I love it. So it shouldn't be too hard, but man, five pages and looking at over 3,000 uh, 3, words there in the uh, in the paperwork. Of course, if you guys know about these uh, exams and stuff like that, man, they can be pretty lengthy. So going to be working on that the rest of the night and tomorrow. So we're pretty busy here on the stream. All right, guys. Have a good night. Uh, we will chat you a little bit later on. Stay safe out there. Peace out.